I just stumbled on a video clip, an all important video clip that I believe every human being on earth who is alive at this very moment needs to see. My number one priority is Africans because we are the hardest hit. But I'm telling you this, it doesn't matter where you come from. doesn't matter your color, your culture, your creed, your religion, whatever. You have to see this clip that I'm about to share with us. Your Excellency, General Yoweri Museveni Kaguta, Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda, and uh, the distinguished guests. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be here again um, to discuss matters of <coughs> national importance and uh, matters of importance to the sovereignty of Africa. This time, our concern is WHO. Uh, WHO has been the cornerstone of the uh, advisories on medical care uh, in Africa for a long time, and WHO has done many good things for us, uh, but WHO is also doing some very bad things that I would like to bring to your attention. There is uh, an international health regulation of WHO that is what WHO uses to guide in the management of pandemics. And there is a proposal to amend that document, Your Excellency. And the amendments so proposed are going to convert WHO, which is um, an advisory body uh, from, uh, uh, that is run by bureaucrats who are not elected, into an administrative authority that will have power to usurp the sovereignty of um, member states in case the director of uh, the director general simply says that there is a pandemic now the negotiations for those for that international health regulations plus a, a new pandemic treaty are currently going on and uh, there will be a meeting uh, this may uh, this month actually we are in and the nego negotiations have been headed by the ministry of health technocrats ministers of health, ministers of foreign affairs, and ambassadors. And I'm not sure that they are briefing the executive and the parliaments in the different countries. Yet they are negotiating uh, things that can destroy the sovereignty of Africa. We cannot afford to trust WHO anymore, Your Excellency. And I'll just mention a few things that have caused great concern to us. In 2014-2015, WHO brought a um, tetanus eradication campaign in our country. It was a campaign to um, eradicate neonatal tetanus, babies who are born who eventually get tetanus. And um, the vaccine that was used is a different type of a tetanus vaccine that is a fertility regulating vaccine where they take tetanus and combine it with a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin that supports pregnancy. And when you inject a woman with that vaccine, she produces antibodies against that hormone and therefore is rendered sterile. So we are noticing an increase in the number of uh, infertility cases among young couples who you examine and they are normal but cannot get children or couples who are losing three, four, five pregnancies uh, before they can carry any pregnancy to term. We were able to expose this, and uh, we have even published a paper that is available. And um, fortunately, in 2017, WHO said Kenya is now free of neonatal tetanus, and they left our country. But they developed this vaccine over a 20-year period of research from 1972 to 1992. And they used that vaccine in South America. And it is possible it has been used in many other African countries. The second reason we cannot trust WHO, Your Excellency, is malaria. UK was able to eradicate malaria in 1921. 
the US was able to eradicate malaria in 1951. And from 1955, WHO has been working on how Africa can eradicate malaria. And up to today, we still haven't uh, been able to eradicate malaria. And now, they have proposed GMO mosquitoes. Uh, it is, seems like it's not enough to own seed that is going to be used to make our people poor because of GMO seed. Now they are making GMO, they are proposing GMO mosquitoes that apparently will sterilize the natural ones. Now we do not know the extent of damage that that kind of activity would take. But worst of all is that they are proposing vaccination of our children against malaria. Yet malaria is a treatable disease. In fact, the hub that is being used, uh, the, the trees that are being used to create uh, quinine, which is one of the best medicines, especially where there is resistance, the trees are grown here in Congo. Artemisia afra, Artemisia anua, is a hub that treats uh, malaria just from drinking the tea of the hub. These things are available to us. And with concerted effort, Africa can eradicate malaria without the help of WHO. Now, one, one of our uh, doctors in Congo uh, wrote a paper that demonstrated how well the Artemisia tea worked and compared it to conventional medicine and even demonstrated it works better than conventional medicine. And two years later, his paper was pulled out. It was retracted. We do not need a vaccine for our children to treat for, for malaria. Then Your Excellency, WHO also proposes the use of the HPV vaccine to prevent cancer of the cervix amongst our children. We are supposed to inject our girls from the age of 10 with a vaccine called human papilloma uh, uh, HPV vaccine. Now, that vaccine is being said to be a vaccine for preventing cancer of the cervix. Your Excellency, that vaccine is for a sexually transmitted disease called human papilloma virus disease. It is, it is not for cancer. Now, any virgin, whether male or female, is not at risk of getting HPV. And it is only on the first sexual experience that there is a risk that one could get this disease. And if a woman got, pre got this disease and got sick with HPV, over 90% of them, their natural immunity destroy the virus and she doesn't need any treatment from anyone. A small group of 1 to 10% will develop persistent disease. And this persistent disease undetected for 15 to 20 years is the only time it would give them a risk of cancer. And Europe and America were able to reduce deaths from cancer of the cervix to negligible levels by only popularizing a test called the, the pap smear test. Among any woman who has ever experienced sexual intercourse, one test done every three years. Your Excellency, WHO has always been an advisory organization. What Dr. Wahome is saying, the new international health regulations that they are pushing will make the decisions by WHO binding to all nations. And that is what we must resist. So if they decided that Uganda needs to have this vaccine, then it will ensure that the vaccine is actually given to all the people because that is their decision. And those are the health regulations that we are saying should not be passed by the health ministers. Now, Dr. Wahome. Dr. Wahome, once now has now rang the alarm bell. Vient de sonner la cloche. I have been proud of promoting 13 vaccines. Je promouvais avec fierté 13 vaccins. In Uganda, oh, you, you, you go and be vaccinated, 13 of them. En Uganda, Lisa, vaccinez-vous, 13 vaccins. Including the one he, she's talk, he's talking about, the one of uh, anti and cervix cancer. Y compris à le vaccin qu'il a évoqué contre le papillomavirus. So I thank you so much. I want to read that paper. Je vous remercie. J'aimerais lire votre document. The, the, so, so you are now.
coming up to fight your wars because for us we fought ours. We are, we are now in the the back in the background of supporting you. Now you take the lead and fight these wars. Vous commencez à mener vos combats. Nous avons à mener les nôtres et nous vous soutenons aujourd'hui. And I thank you for immunizing me against the WHO. Et je vous remercie de m'avoir vacciné contre l'OMS. Because now you have given me a vaccine. Vous venez de me vacciner contre l'OMS. To be careful about WHO. De faire attention quand je traite avec l'OMS. Let me let me just show you something. I am going to show you something on my YouTube channel. Uh, the title is Next Pandemic Killed or Caged Like Animals Part 1. Next Pandemic Killed or Caged Like Animals Part 1. In this video, I exposed every single thing that you just heard, especially the aspect that gives WHO the power to declare an emergency in your country. And before they declare emergency, it doesn't have to be that there is a pandemic necessarily. There's something they call One Health. One Health means that if they see that there is an emergency, medical emergency involving animals or involving the, the planet or the climate, yeah, it doesn't have to be human beings, that they can actually declare emergency and take over administrative functions in your country taking charge of how things are run in your country they become the government they can say let these people here be quarantined and let this happen to them let this that group here let this local government let this state let that who becomes the government the big brother in your own country and many countries are signing this thing right now. They are signing it and they don't have to go through the Senate, through, through the Parliament. This is what the doctor is saying. And your brother Joseph Oketipu told you this about a year ago. You guys go to my channel and watch my videos. You're not listening. I tell you everything. Bill Gates coming with GMO mosquitoes. Did you see what they what they exposed today? How that they are making our people sterile so that people will stop having children because they know that producing more human beings on earth is an affront to the devil because we carry the image of God and the image of God appears in us biologically as the DNA because God created man and wrote his name in every human being, every human being through our DNA. They want to depopulate what God made so that the ones they have made themselves in the image of Satan will take over the earth. How many times am I going to say these things? Robots, humanoids, they have them waiting in millions. Your AIs, you see how you guys are already enjoying AI, chat GPT and stuff. They have them already in humans. They even have robots that are now feeling emotions. They want to take over. You don't understand what's happening. They want to wipe us out. They want to depopulate the world and Africa is their greatest problem. Do you see what the plans these guys have? Malaria is what WHO has been trying to cure in Africa when our brothers have found cures everywhere. This was what we did during the time of COVID and we kept telling people all this nonsense. They have cures in Africa, but they will not let Africa bring out their cures to take care of these diseases. They won't let us because the plan is not to provide cure. The plan is to provide cage to cage you and then destroy you and kill you. Oh, I love the Ugandan president. He says, I thank you for immunizing me against the WHO. He got immunized. That's why they are flooding our markets in Africa with GMOs. Africans, come to my South Africa and see the number of crops that have been wiped off in their organic forms and replaced with GMOs. Our people literally eat only GMOs in South Africa. They're doing it in Nigeria. 
Remember the last video I did in Igbo language? I told my people how that a doctor from Nigeria in Jamaz exposed Bill Gates as having a hand in the killings taking place in Nigeria because they want to displace our farmers who are planting organic crops in their farms so those farmers can depend on GMOs that are full of diseases. GMOs, when you see mangoes that don't look like the real mango, they look like purple, throw them away. Africans, Nigerians, wake up. If you people don't want to wake up, okay, Igbo people, wake up! Any place you see them selling those things, make sure you raise alarm and tell people to avoid them. When we bankrupt them, we will make sure we send them packing. Monsanto is there in South Africa destroying our people. I am so excited that we have Africans who are waking up. That's why I told you the war they want to start is to destroy everything and reset everything all over again so that we can have the fourth industrial revolution. I've actually tried my best, but I'm not going to stop. Watch that video again. I don't want to repeat things that I have said before. I made part one up to part two. Go and watch it again. It says, next pandemic killed or caged like animals, part one. I made it. But you know another thing that gave me joy and made me very happy? Ghanaians are at war with these satanic GMOs. GMOs are crops that you plant. They manufacture them. They tinker with the DNA of the crops. And when they, they give it to you, you plant it, it does not reproduce itself. So you keep going back to them to get another one. The GMO corn, you cannot take that corn and take the seed and plant in the ground to germinate and give you something. No, you have to go back and get another one. And they keep updating it, updating it with different, different satanic diseases. They inject into these crops to sterilize you and make you impotent and make you infertile as a woman. Ghanaians. Have stood up. Nigerians are still playing to the gallery. Nigerians are trying to be the good boys. Nigerians are taking the, the destiny of over 200 million people for granted. Playing to the gallery to these guys. They look at Ghana leading the way when it came to G LGBTQ. Ghana led the way. Today, GMO Ghana is leading the way. No matter what you may think about that country, we have human beings there who still reason and think. Watch this next clip so you understand what I'm talking about. We can produce foods, we can feed ourselves. GMO is not the way to go. Who told you that GMO is the way to go for Ghana? Ghana's food security is for the states, for the nation, to put in drastic measures for our agriculture industry to boom. We produce tomatoes, we produce food stuff, we leave them on the, market, uh, on the farms to rot. We don't even have more trouble roads to bring them to, 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 to those who need it. And he said that our food security hinges on GMO. Ghana's food security. Come again. What next? What next is that the plaintiffs and the society at large, the peasant farmers and all stakeholders, from today will be monitoring the NDA so that these orders that the court has given out there, they follow these orders. If they don't follow these orders, your, good is, your guests are as good as mine. We'll come back to court to enforce them to do that. That's why they should rest assured. So today, Ghana has won, and today, GMO has been exposed. The foreign multinational companies, I'm speaking to you, Monsanto, Sigenta, where your government is telling you you have been exposed. You cannot dump GMOs onto our Ghanaian market. You cannot dump GMO on Ghanaians. And if you want to dump GMOs, the court of Ghana is saying that, label it so that Ghanaians will see that your Monsanto GMO, Mindy, I don't want it. It's as simple as that. So it's victory for Ghana. All right, thank you. Do you see it? Do you see it? GMOs from pineapples to oranges to corn to mango to bananas to whatever they are saying you must label your stuff as gmo so that our people will know that this one is a poison genetically modified organism why are you modifying the gene in something that god created and said take this fruit as your food and let the herbs be your medicine satan said let me go and manipulate the gene of that food so when they eat the food they'll eat 
poison into themselves. And the herb may not even be able to help you anymore. They are even manipulating the gene of the herb that is supposed to cure us so that we can depend on the satanically generated vaccines. You see what is happening? What does it take for us to wake up and know that this is no longer a game? The guys are out to get us there, out to destroy us. Why can't we just wake up as an Africans, as Africans, as, as a continent and say no? Political importance is rubbish compared to the destiny of your people collectively. What is wrong with you African politicians? What is wrong with you? The politicians won't do it because they want to be called good names by the colonial forces. We the people will do it. Individually stop taking seeds to plant all this rubbish that you're planting. Something that's supposed to take five years, ten years. It takes one month, two months and you are happy. And you are celebrating it online. You are part of the problem. I am giving you the information today. Stop. You are killing people. Stop it. Enough is enough. Let's wake up Africa. Let's wake up. Let's be immunized. In the same way that the president of Uganda has been immunized. Against the WHO that wants to become the nanny state. I put this in a video I made several years ago about the Olympics, when we were talking about COVID, I exposed it and I brought out the predictive programming that was infused into the London Olympics of 2011 or 2012. And I produced WHO for you and I told you, these guys are going to be the nanny state. Go and watch that video. That was made four years ago. I put it there. Check it. It's manifesting now. Have I tried? Have I been trying? But the point is, are you people listening? The time has come. Share this video. It's not a professional video, but share this video wide. Let everybody, let government houses all over Africa see this. And let's begin to take precaution. Just like Uganda is about to take precaution right now. And protect our population. Protect our population. We are God's children. And that's why God is revealing all this thing. Raising all these men who are bringing out the facts. God bless you.